Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well today. It's Ray Ray. So this is episode two of my natal chart interpretations, okay? And obviously being from the United Kingdom and having heard the news recently of, you know, the passing of um, Queen Elizabeth II, I feel it only fitting to celebrate the the life of this truly great servant to our country by doing her chart. And of course, I'll also tie in, you know, the new king, King Charles III's chart as well into this because I've been looking at both charts and I've also been comparing it to the chart of the United Kingdom as well. And I've found quite a few interesting things. Um, so yeah, we'll do this today. I, for one, before I get into this, would just like to, you know, express my appreciation for what Queen Elizabeth II has done for our country. You know, she's been at the helm for 72 years. For most people in the United Kingdom, she's all that we've ever known. You know, she's been through it all. She's been through world wars. She's been through, you know, some of the greatest challenges that any monarch has had to face in recent history you know and her dedication and her leadership has really been inspiring to most people here and her losses you know felt deeply all around the world and it's just so nice to see so many people paying homage and trip and tributes to this immense leader that we've all lost but of course, life goes on, and you know Charles now takes the realm, the um, the helm or the realm as well, which is kind of fitting, you know. According to his chart, I think we're in good hands as a nation, and I'll explain why throughout this video. Okay, so let's start with the Queen. Okay, so whenever I'm looking at a natal chart like I did in the Yogananda video, I always begin with the Ascendant because the Ascendant is the karmic doorway through which one enters this world. The Ascendant is how, you know, the soul interacts with matter through the personality structure and so on. Now, if you look at the Queen's Ascendant here in Capricorn, you know, now Capricorn Ascendants are... You know, each ascendant has its own way of processing all of the other aspects in the chart. You know, for example, the queen here, she has Saturn square Mars in her chart, for example. That aspect has to be filtered through her Capricorn ascendant because the, cap the, the personality or the ascendant really determines what the person will do with certain aspects. If she was a Virgo rising, she would use the Saturn square Mars in a different way than she would if she was a Capricorn rising, for example. Okay. And let me just also point out that this isn't a normal person's chart either. This is a monarch and 99.9% .9 of us don't really know what it's like to walk in the shoes of, you know, royalty to have all of those eyes on you constantly, you know, and there is a great degree of pressure and responsibility that comes with ruling a nation for sure. And one, you know, as prevalent as Great Britain, especially. But anyway, the Capricorn Ascendant is all about the conscience. Okay. It's all about being true to oneself, being true to one's integrity and so on. Um, and having a Capricorn Ascendant is a tremendously powerful as um, placement um, for a monarch, especially. Okay. Um, what's really interesting about this Ascendant as well is that her South Node, okay, her South Node is literally one degree away from her Ascendant as well. Okay. Now, this is really interesting indeed because the South Node, as many of you may know, from a linear perspective, represents your past lives, okay? Now, having a Capricorn South Node indicates that in past lives that this person was some was somebody in a very dignified position. She held, you know, a very dignified position in past lives as well. Maybe she was a monarch in her past lives too, and she's reincarnated to do it, you know, all over again. It's very possible. But what's really interesting about this as well is that she has the south node in the 12th house. And as 
many of you may or may know as well. Um, the twelfth house is ruled by Neptune. You know, it's the most compassionate um, house and sign and planet. Pisces, Neptune, twelfth house in the entire zodiac. So this gives a immense passion, um, compassion. You know, it gave her a heart. You know, an oceanic heart of love and compassion for everybody who she really came across. Also, her, her ascendant, okay? Her ascendant ruler is um, Saturn in Scorpio, okay? Which goes to show that her, her, her personality will undergo immense transformations over the course of her lifetime, you know? And obviously, she's lived through, you know, various generations. She lived till she was 96 years of age, you know? So she's seen gen generations come and go. You know, and I'm sure she's had to readjust a little to those societal changes that occurred over the course of her lifetime. And that's probably, you know, what that means. But also, if you look at her MC, 25 degrees Scorpio, her MC is closely conjunct her Saturn as well. However, she has Saturn in retrograde motion which indicates that she's relearning a lesson from her previous lives. So maybe the Queen, Her Majesty, you know, she didn't fully grasp a, les a lesson while she was in power in her previous life. And in this life, you know, she probably mastered that lesson, you know, with what she experienced in this incarnation. So we spoke a little bit about the South Node. Let's talk about the North Node now. So she has the North Node in Cancer. You know, um, it's interesting because she's got the the Ascendant in Capricorn. But the North Node is in Cancer, which goes to show it's like a bit of a double whammy. It may sound paradoxical to you, but like because the, the Capricorn Ascendant filters through one's conscience, through one's integrity. But having the North Node in Cancer also indicates that she, in this life, is learning how to relate to her emotionality more honestly, how to really embrace her emotionality, you know, and obviously being the ruler of a great nation such as Great Britain, you know, enabled her to do that because she... You know, you you can ask anybody who's ever met the Queen. I, I unfortunately didn't have that opportunity. My father did meet the Queen um, when he was about 12 years old. She opened a, a large tunnel, underwater tunnel um, near his house, and she was giving all of the kids um, ice creams. He went back for the second one so he could meet her again, but she was happy to do that for him. You know, everybody who's met the Queen, you know, says that she just had this really bright and glowing aura about her. Some really, you know, um, almost divine kind of personality. But, you know, she really was a mother to the United Kingdom. You know, and cancer is also the sign of the divine mother. So in some way, she was also learning to become a conduit, a channel, an instrument for the love and the mercy and the compassion of the Divine Mother. You know, and who better to, to be on the throne, you know, than a living embodiment of that archetype. You know, so Britain was very, very fortunate to have somebody like Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth II on the throne indeed. Her North Node is in Cancer, so that means her North Node ruling planet is obviously her Leo moon. And as many of you astrologers may know, Leo is the sign of royalty itself. So this is a huge royalty marker that is embedded into her natal chart here. Okay. She's got the Leo moon in the seventh house, indicating that her closest of relationships will obviously also be connected to her royal family and so on and so forth. But yeah, having that Leo moon also gives her strong leadership qualities as well. Um, she's ve she was a very passionate kind of, you know, person and probably very fiery in some ways as well. And she understood, you know, what her duty was, what her role role was, and so on from a very tender age. You know, she de pledged her devotion and loyalty to the throne. You know, when she was around twenty one or twenty two years of age, you know, and she stayed on the throne, you know, for the duration of her life after making that pledge, which is just you know extraordinary really extraordinary she also has venus in pisces which once more is a very very benevolent and compassionate kind of sign 
you know, people who have Venus and Pisces are tremendously um, kind and generous people for sure. You know, and if unless that um, Venus is afflicted, but his isn't. His is actually really well aspected. It's making almost an exact trine to Pluto in the sixth house, indicating that, you know, her way of being and her kindness and her generosity and her compassion can have a real transformative influence upon those who, you know, see her. You know, her, she's someone who really led by example, you know, and it also shows in the natal chart. Okay, so here's an interesting thing. When I looked at the natal chart of the United Kingdom, okay, the United Kingdom's um, moon, which is in Cancer, is at 19 degrees in um, Cancer, but also the United Kingdom's MC, which is its rulers, okay, is in Cancer as well. So that Cancer moon is the United Kingdom's um, MC ruler, and the Queen's North Node is literally in conjunction with the United Kingdom's MC ruler, the Moon, which again indicates that she was a great mother, not only to her children and her grandchildren and so on, but also to the nation itself. She saw the United Kingdom ha as her child in some way, shape, or form. And again, who better to have on the throne? You know, a lot of people who say astrology is fake, <laughs> you know, you're perfectly fine to say that if you want, but the stars are perfectly aligned here. You know, when I look at all three of these charts, the queens and, you know, the kings and Great Britons, they perfectly align. It's just tremendously, it's just tremendous how how it does. It never um, ceases to amaze me personally. Another aspect that the Queen had with the with Great Britain's chart is that um, her Mars in Aquarius, I have that, that placement too, and her Jupiter in Aquarius, which are closely in conjunction with one another, you know, we're in conjunction with Venus's, uh, um, sorry, Great Britain's Venus in Aquarius, which means that she was well acquainted with the times that she was in. And in some ways, she was also way ahead of her time as well. A lot of people have this weird perception of the Queen that she was just some, you know, elderly lady who really doesn't do anything. But that's not true. You know, she done a lot of great things for this country. You know, and she helped push the boat quite a lot. You know, she helped reform our society in many ways. And in some ways, helped shift the balance back from a you know typical patriarchal society into a more balanced society now where women you know have more rights women have you know be better opportunities of you know working in roles that they wouldn't have been able to you know when the queen first took over so there's been a lot more you know equal opportunities and equality and diversity occur within british society since she's took over you know, and that's, I think, that is down to her Aquarius placements especially. You know, Aquarius energy is all about humanitarianism, altruism, you know, being a selfless servant and so on. And she was definitely a selfless servant for the United Kingdom. And we're immensely grateful for that, of course. One other aspect that really stands out to me when I look at the Queen's chart is um, her Taurus sun is at zero degrees. Taurus um, is a really stabilizing kind of sign. Obviously, its opposite sign is Scorpio. You know, Scorpio is all about, you know, change and transformation. Taurus is the sign of stability. And here, sun at zero degrees, which is the most powerful degree of any sign, you know, in Taurus also indicates to us, or to me at least, that she was a really stabilizing force within the British royal house and British and you know, a real stabilizing figure for British society as a whole. The sign Leo is on her eighth house as well, indicating that, yeah, you know, she would bear witness and live through many transformations within the society that she took the lead of. But let's open Charles's chart now as well, because I think this is a fitting time to do this. So the, you know, His Majesty, the new king, Charles III, there's a few um, really m huge karmic markers 
not only with his mother, obviously, but also with um, the United Kingdom's chart. So the first one is that Charles's moon is exactly conjunct his mother's son in Taurus. And I find that remarkable. Obviously, in a sun-moon conjunction, in sinistry and romantic relationships, this is the best aspect that you can have. But obviously, this is a motherly and a son relationship. And because the mother is the dominant figure in this relationship, obviously, because it's the queen's son in conjunction with Charles's moon. But this, this indicates that the, the influence of his mother will be the guide and force that will help him lead his country to the best of his ability. Obviously, in a man's chart as well, the, the moon is the mother, okay? So his moon is in conjunction with his mother's son, exactly. Once more, indicating kindred souls, a really karmic relationship, you know, and these two, I believe, personally have been, you know, in a royal family in many lifetimes, not just this one. One interesting thing about Charles' chart as well is that his north node is also in conjunction with his mother's son as well. So that this indicates that just being around his mother, and obviously he's been around his mother his entire life. He's lived with her, you know, <laughs> you know, he's been the prince of Wales for like 50 something years. And, you know, being under her wing and, you know, just watching her set the example, you know, has helped him activate his Taurus North Node for sure. And again, Taurus, the Taurus North Node is all about stability, etc. Another really big and karmic aspect between um, His Majesty and him and the Queen is that Charles's son, a 22 degree Scorpio, is in conjunction with his mother's Saturn as well. And obviously, if, if you're an astrologer, you know that Saturn conjunctions in particular represent relationship glue. You know, they represent um, the ability for longevity between two people, whether they be family members or whether they be, you know, intimate relationship or whatever. Saturn is glue. Saturn keeps people together, basically. And his mum's Saturn, which represents, don't forget, the Saturn in Queen Elizabeth's chart is the Ascendant Ruler as well, and it's in conjunction with her MC. And Charles's son is in, con in conjunction with those two markers right there. So that indicates that, you know, his mother's example, his mother's personality will also help him, you know, help him develop his own personality because what I want to get to next is that Charles actually has a Leo ascendant, which again is the sign of royalty, you know? Uh, so Charles is, here's an interesting thing that I've just realized while th um, trying to compute this in my brain. Um, Charles's ascendant, King Charles's ascendant um, ruler, chart ruler is the Scorpio sun, 22 degrees. And it is in conjunction with Queen Elizabeth's um, chart ruler as well, the Scorpio Saturn. So obviously their personalities are very aligned with one another as well. And they really um, are holding true to the to the traditions and the, you know, the the truths and the integrity of, you know, British rulership. And this is, you know, why I believe Charles will actually do very well on the throne because his his planets align perfectly with his mother's, you know, and the queen didn't do too bad, did she? And I think that he'll, he'll do well as well. Now, Charles's Leo ascended then, like we've just spoken of, is in conjunction with Britain's Jupiter, okay? And obviously um, Jupiter is, you know, the planet of benevolence. It's, it's a planet of good fortune and expansion as well. You know, so this goes to show that actually... Charles's way of going about things will actually be immensely fortunate for Great Britain as a whole. And it wouldn't surprise me to see immense expansion all across, you know, um, British economy, etc. during this, this reign. I can't tell you how long that he's going to be reigning for. Um, I haven't even checked, to be honest. I don't like to look at things like that. So, yeah. And finally, let's finish up on another marker. 
Charles is um, MC Ruler. So the MC Ruler is obviously one's vocation, one's calling as well. Not just a career, but one's calling, what they feel as if God has created them to do, basically, yeah? And Charles's MC is in Aries, one indicating that he, he's a great leader of people. Okay, so this is a great um, sign to have for a king. But also, his MC ruler is Mars in Sagittarius, which which um, will definitely help him with foreign relations. You know, he'll feel he's somebody who's well acquainted with many of the different cultures in this world, for sure, having that Mars in um Sagittarius and also he's probably well he is well traveled we all know that but also that Mars that MC ruler and Mars is also nearly exactly trining Britain's Saturn as well there's a reason why Britain still has its monarchy it's because Britain's Saturn is in Leo okay and Leo again is the sign of royalty so you know there's been some people you know like the newly elected prime minister saying that you know, she wants to try and abolish the monarchy. But that's not going to happen for a very, very long time. And uh, it's because of Saturn. Saturn, you know, will keep that royal family it, um, at the helm for a long time. I hope this, um, this interpretation was um, eye-opening for you. It really was eye-opening for me while I was making my notes. I was like, wow, because I haven't really seen the charts of these people yet. You know, and it's just, again, let me just repeat myself. Astrology never ceases to amaze me, really. It's just incredible the way everything just pieces together synchronistically. So, yeah, I know I did say in the last video that um, I'd let you guys choose who I do next. But obviously, due to the events that unfolded um, last week, I found it only fitting to do this video. One other thing that I find really synchronistic about um, Her Majesty's passing is that she passed away on the, was it the 8th of September? Yeah, on the 8th of September. And that is also the feast day of Mother Mary. Okay, so there's no, really no better time to go than that. You know, and I find it kind of fitting also that she, when she passed away, there was a big rainbow over Buckingham Palace as well on the same day. You know, and I think that's just God's way of telling us that, you know, she done very well and we're immensely proud of her and grateful as well. So, yeah, um, let me know who you want me to do next. And um, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as well if you haven't already. Take care for now.